Does the following set of ordered pairs represent a function? And below we've got a set of ordered pairs here, which means we've got a collection of statements between brackets that have a number and then a second number. So here we've got between these brackets, we've got one and five, then we've got two and four, nine and five, three and negative one, one and negative one. So this is a set of ordered pairs because each, each statement here in between the brackets has a first value and a second value. And in order to, to evaluate whether or not this set of ordered pairs represents a function, what we do is we consider that each of these first values, so here it's going to be one or here it's going to be two, we consider these as inputs. This is an input, two is an input here, or an input. And the second value in each of these bracketed statements, we consider that an output. So here, four is an output. And so we can read each one of these statements as assigning an input to a particular output. So for instance, this bracketed uh, expression one and five, we could read this as saying as if, if we have, uh, if we have some little machine here, if you were to give me one, so the value one and put it into our little machine, what would that machine, what would be the output? And the output, so this machine would output the value of five. So this is, this is what this uh, bracketed statement means in terms of whether or not this, uh, all of these collectively represent a function. So if we'd input two into this machine, we'd get four as an output. If we'd input nine, we'd get five, etc. So the question is, does this following set of ordered pairs represent a function? Well, in order to evaluate whether it represents a function, let's quickly review how we determine whether something represents a function. So a function takes an input uh, and then it munches on this input or it sort of considers this input. So it takes this input, this is our little function here, this, this pink square. And after considering the, this input, it gives out exactly one output, precisely one output. If we would input something into, uh, input a value into, into some machine and get two different outputs, so two outputs that were different from one another, then this machine wouldn't be a function or this assigning of inputs to outputs wouldn't be a function because a function has to take each individual input and give it only one output, only associate it with one output. So given that, let's consider what happens. Uh, well, let's consider whether or not this ordering of pairs collectively, this set of ordered pairs represents a function. So here we've said that if we input one into this, this set, uh, then we get five. And so here we've got one input is associated with just one output. So at the moment, after considering this first statement, this could be a function. We haven't got more than one output here when we input one. So it's looking good so far. Let's have a look at here, two and four. So here this says that if you input two into this, this uh, set of ordered pairs, then it will think about that and then it will return the value four. Again, we've got a single input, let's put in here, and then we get a single output, which is four. So consequently, you know, so, so far we haven't found any evidence that this is not a function. So far it seems like it could be a function. Let's have a look at nine and five. Well, here we have an input of nine, and then this set of ordered pairs thinks about it, and then it outputs five. So here again, we have a single input and a single output. So this is looking good. Let's consider this next one, three and minus one. So three is the input here, here's the input. And uh, this, this set of ordered pairs would say, okay, I'm going to say that the output here is minus one. So again, one, a single input and a single output. So it's looking good. Let's consider this last one here, one and minus one. Okay, so if we input one in here, into this mapping of sets, then it says that we should get, this statement says that we should get minus one as our output. Now notably, if we input three, we get minus one. If we input one, we get minus one. That's fine in and of itself. It's fine if we input something into our set of ordered pairs and get the same output for two different inputs. That could, that could completely uh, still be a function. There's no reason why that couldn't be a function.
However, what we have noted here is that at the beginning we had this rule, which said if we input 1, then the output is 5. Output is 5. Whereas here, later on, we have a different rule that says if we input 1, then the output is minus 1. Essentially, what this is saying is if we input 1 into this set of ordered pairs, the set of ordered pairs says that this 1 value is associated with 5, and it's also associated with the value minus 1. And because it assigns two different outputs to this single input, we can say that this, this cannot be a function. This is not a function. Uh, the reason it's not a function is that a function must take each and every input and associate it with just one output. Here we found an input where there are two outputs associated with that input. Consequently, it violates our definition and this set of ordered pairs is not a function.